Hi, welcome to another Mac 7 tutorial. This is number 25, sampling using the buffer. Well, um, for those of you following along in the larger class, we're going to start using the third um, sort of general way of making sound. And for those of you just kind of stopping by to check this out, then uh, we're going to learn a little bit about sampling today. In Max, um, when you store a sound somewhere, which you need to do with sampling, what you need is a buffer. So there's a kind of relationship between the thing you use to record and the thing you use to play and this place where you store the sound, which is called the buffer. So let's type the letter N. Let's unlock our patcher and then type the letter N again. And go ahead and type buffer and you'll notice that buffer has a tilde on it. And now we're going to name our buffer and I would like um, you to name it. Uh, I'm going to name mine uh, Johnny um, just because uh, that's sort of similar to my name but not enough that I may have put it in another patch. So or Johnny buffer whatever. Name it something that isn't the same as anybody else's. So here we have a buffer Johnny and um, we can also type in, you can uh, type a file name into Buffer so that it opens with that file name. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we're doing a little bit closer. So to this Buffer, we can do a couple things to get files into it. One, we can type it as part of the argument. And one way that we can get that file in Max is to go over here to our file browser. And our file browser pops up. And under Kinds, if it's not already expanded, click on Kinds. Click on Audio. And then you have all these different audio files to choose from. So you can choose one. I'm going to choose, uh, let's see, what will we stick in here? Um, I thought I saw a, a cello? Come on, something simple. There we go. So click on the cello file and let's look at what pops up around here. Right down here you can see the name of the cello file. If you um, try to copy it, however, you will be defeated in your work um, because Max for some reason cleverly made it impossible to actually copy that. So what I'm going to do is come over here and type in uh, cello-f2.aif. So over here, oh great, I can't see it now. Hmm, how to overcome that real quickly. Let's close our window here. Reget our file browser window and move it over here. There. Take that, Max. And then uh, clicking and double clicking and triple click clicking, make it so you can edit. And behind the name of your buffer, just type in exactly as it appears in the file cello hyphen f2 dot aif. So what will happen is that this buffer, which is now named Johnny, when it opens, we'll go and get cello f2.aif file. Now, there's a reason I told you to do it that way. Um, this is one of those um, maddening things about Max sometimes, is that all of the sample sounds are in the Max um, application file, which you can't unlock if you're approaching it through a regular window. So, for example, if you wanted to put any other sound in but something that comes with Max, you could put a message here that says read and connect that to your buffer, lock your patcher, and then click on it. And it would go and get whatever music, and I might have some here, but probably not any AIFFs, which is what it's like. But let's just leave that for a minute. Trying to get it out of the Max application, though, one finds very quickly that whereas in the old versions of Max you had a nice open folder here, 
the new version of Max, you can't do it and you can't unlock it. There's no key command to do it. So, annoying? Yes, very. But we still love Max and we're going to continue on anyway. So we didn't read anything into this buffer, but now we have this buffer named Johnny with a cello of F2 in it. And let's um, make the next object for listening to samples, unlock our patcher, type letter N, and now we're going to make an object called Groove, which also has a tilde at the end, and name it the same thing that you named your um, buffer. So mine is named Johnny. So what this does is it links them. Johnny is the name of that memory that has sound in it. And that's the only thing you need to put for Groove is Johnny. And then here's the output of Johnny. And uh, that's for synchronizing, but we can um, hook this right up to the speakers that we're using. And whoops, got an extra one, as I often do. And then we can just put um, some messages. Oh, I'm sorry, we need another object. To get Groove to play, you have to send it a signal. So type N, type SIG, tilde, that's signal. Okay, so what we'll find is that Actually, I'm going to move this over because Groove is very funny. It, it When you send it a, a, um, a letter, we often send zeros to turn things off. But Groove understands that as start playing at zero. So we're going to send it a message, zero. And it can be a more complicated message, too, and maybe we'll get to that later. But we're just going to send it a message. Go ahead, play at zero, and... We're going to also send it a signal, which is going to be 1. Actually, let's, um, well, I'll, I'll put a box later. So there's the signal 1. Okay, so lock our patcher, send signal 1. Now it's getting signal, and now we push play. Oops, sorry, we turn the audio on. Thank you. Let's do that again. 0. Very nice, very nice. So if we were smart enough to uh, be able to change this now, we could change it to another sound, but there is a way to change the sound. Let's unlock our patcher and stick a float box here. Just type the letter F and you get a, a number box with a float. Very handy to do. And we're going to run that right over the signal and lock our patcher. And let's um, Let's start out with it as 1. So just type a 1 and then back off it. And now we hit 0. There's our cello. And now we bring it down to, say, 0.76. And we do it again. Oh, nice and low. How low can it go? Pretty low. Whoa. Even into negative numbers. I'm not sure what that does to it. Yeah, nice. So we can change the pitch of Groove by changing the signal that it plays back at. Now, that means that any audio file in here, if we know that we want a, a, if, um, if we know that at 1, it sounds like that, which we happen to know is in F2, and then we want to play the next F up, we could just make this a 2, and it'll be the next octave up. Nice. So now we have a system for being able to change the sound of groove. Very exciting. Very exciting indeed. So let's um, consider what is coming out of our keyboard way back here. Those of you who don't already have a keyboard here, tough luck. No, I'm kidding. Get yourself a K-slider and, and just use the left and right output. But for those of us who have gotten this far, I'm just going to put um, two number... Whoops, I just can't stop doing that. Unlock your patcher and make yourselves two number boxes and connect them to that last mystery 
gate output. So now, and let's go up here to the top and, well, we could play a song, Lock Your Patcher. Um, of course, this was our MIDI. Come on, MIDI. And then the electronic. Still playing MIDI. I wonder why. Oh. There we go. There's multiple patches open here, so. There's our electronic. And now let's put it on mystery and play the same thing. So here's our here's the output that we're getting. There's 6476, 640. We turn that up a little bit. We get 64100, 640. Our challenge is to change that into some sort of way of turning this on at the right note. So we know that the cello is an F2, which I believe C, D, E, F would be this key, which, whoops, need to put, there's E, there's F. F, by sheer coincidence, key number 53, happens to be, oh wait, wait, that's actually F3, but it is sort of still funny that it's the key F on your computer. I'm going to go down one to the twos. I believe key 41 is really the one we're looking for. So um, what we want to know is what the frequency is of an F2. And we have a way of finding that, as you may recall, from when we did the electrosynth patch, which is the object, type N, um, MIDI to frequency. So if we put a MIDI to frequency there, then we will be able to find out, and a float here because frequencies are often float numbers, we will be able to find out what that um, what that frequency is. So go ahead and push your F and look whoops, lock your patcher, and push F, and you get 87.31. Sure, that's probably an F2. So the nice thing about that is we now know that F2, if that's what we have here, is going to be 87.31, and now we know how to get our signal. What we do? Yeah, we do, believe it or not. What we do is we say this number over the number that is F2, meaning 87.31, should give us should give us a 1 if it's an F2, and anything else will give us the right, um, oh, I'll just do it, and you'll, you'll, you'll get it immediately, it'll be so obvious. So a new, and we're going to say that we are going to divide this, that is a forward slash, by 87.31. Okay, and then whatever that number is, we'll come out right here and change our signal, and then this number will tell us how much we want to play it. So, um, well, let's get that to that in a moment. Let's uh. We'll just have this one uh, hit a bang for the moment, and then we'll change it. Let's just make sure that this whole crazy idea works. Okay? So, and it may not work in the right order. Remember, it might go bang, and then the number, or the number, and then bang. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my F. So every time I hit the F, it plays again, and when I let off the key, it hits it again. Let's try a G and see what happens. Okay, so now all we have to do 
is stop the silly thing from uh, from playing twice, and that seems simple enough by uh, using our select object, which you might remember from before. So let's get rid of that bang and put a select object in there. Select what? Well, we'll select um, zero and utilize this really crazy function that's usually almost useless on the select object. And that is this. If we get a zero, it'll make this bang. But anything other than a zero will come out here and supply us with a number. And that number um, is going to set our volume. That's our plan. So what we're going to do now is put a gain control down here. Gain tilde, great. And um, you can move this around so it's sideways or whatever you prefer, but what you want to do is have your outputs coming out of the gain control. There's actually a far... Well, anyway, the groove's going to come through there, and we are going to have this. We need to know what the range on a gain control is, so we're going to go ahead and open our inspector. We have highlighted this, and we look over here, and the number of steps is 158. So um, between 0 and 158 will get you from one to the other. So now we're going to put another object in here, the scale object. I know you guys are all loving this. New, scale, and the number coming in is going to be B between 0 and 127, and the number going out is going to be between 0 and 158. And that's going to be a 0 coming out, which we could, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. So this letter coming out, this number coming out, is going to come over here, go into the scale. The scale is going to come out and turn the volume to the right amount. If it is a zero, we're going to tell the groove to stop. So we're just going to put a message here that says stop. And I hope that's not too abrupt. We'll see if it is. And we'll connect that right to the groove there and see how we're doing on making some groovy sound now. So go ahead and lock your patcher and let's see if uh, we'll put the thing at 93 there and let's try playing RF. Can't hear a thing. What happened? We've interrupted something. There's no sound on off. The scale is turned this up to the right amount. It's not triggering it to play. Oh, right, of course. It's sending this number around, but nothing ever says, hey, play. So um, we just need to whack on that uh, play but only when something other than the regular number comes through. So, I'm sorry, I'm mumbling. Let me say that again in clear. Essentially, if a zero comes through, it's going to hit stop. And we are using the, the, if a zero comes through here, it's going to hit stop. This gets lovely and confusing, so it'll hit stop. But if anything else comes through, we're going to start a note. And what did we use to do that with before? Yes, we used the message zero, which we is kind of funny in this case, but there you go. It's the joy of the joy of programming. Okay, so now when the number comes through here, it will hit a zero and play. 
the other number will come through here and tell it what note to play, and this number will also be scaled to set it to the right volume. So let's, uh, just for fun, turn the volume way, whoops, lock your patcher, turn the volume way down and see if this volume goes down when you play a note. Oh, it does. I can't hear anything. Okay, let's turn it way up. Oh, oh! Oh my goodness, it's fantastic. Well, I think that we have time. We do. I, I, I always do about a 25 minute movie and I have time to do this. I'm gonna go for it. Let's figure out how to change our buffer really fast so that we can get two sounds in here. And let's do it with the U menu because we love the U menu so much. So go ahead and type an N, type U menu, and then get your inspector up there. Our inspector is up. And what we're going to do is enter the files in here, scroll way down to menu items and click on edit. And you get the little window here that we're going to start entering things into. Now, go back over here to your file browser, which of course won't operate when the edit menu is open. Okay. I can see this just coming to a, oh, there it is. There's our, I'm going to, I'm closing my windows just so we can do this sanely. Okay, not closing it. I'm resizing it. So I move this one over. I can see my file browser here. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to open the menu items again. And I'm going to type in here. I'm going to get rid of that empty. I'm going to type the file for cello f2.io. AIF, C E L L O hyphen F two dot A I F. And then I put a comma after it. And I think I would also like to have the base there. So I'm gonna type I'm gonna type whoops. I'm gonna type base dot A I F F B A S S dot A I F F. And um, you can put in as many as you want. I don't have a, we don't have a way to just fill it up with these because in their infinite wisdom, uh, well, I, I'm not going to go on about it, but Max decided to put a locked uh, folder um, for their application icon. So let's, uh, oh, let's say something a little different, huh? Uh, there we go, jongly. Everybody wants to know what jongly is. So type in here, space J-O-N-G-L-Y dot A-I-F. And uh, I think that's enough just to kind of get the point across. Okay. Um, you can close your file browser, make your window big again, and we have our menu now, which ha which will spit out those names, but in order to get the buffer to read them, we need to have a prepend object. So type an N, type prepend, space, R-E-A-D, and then connect the prepend to the leftmost inlet of the buffer. But now be careful here. This outlet of the U menu sends out the number. This one sends out the name. And that's what we want. So we want the name to come out and be prepended by read. So it'll go, it'll read the file into this buffer. And then when we tell Groove to play it, then, uh, excuse me, it will play whatever it has in buffer's memory. Let's give it a try. First, we're playing our cello without. Really nice. Now let's try our bass. Nice. Jongly? Oh, oh my.
All right, people, that's 25 minutes of pure agonizing fun. I hope you enjoyed it. We have a working selectable buffer, and we have a little bit of groove going on over here. Uh, stay tuned. We will take it one step further in the next video. Thanks for watching.